Jacob saw that his brother was hungry and he knew he had the soup. He knew he had the ability, the capability of giving his brother something to eat. But instead, this is what he thinks. I'm not going to give him any soup unless he gives me something in return, right? That's the mindset that Jacob had. Very self-centered, very selfish. I'm not going to give you a bowl of soup. I'm trying to visualize how big is this bowl of soup? How big would it have to be for a birthright? But I'm imagining it's a regular bowl, a bowl of soup. Now, Esau was crazy for doing it, yes. But there was something wrong with Jacob for scheming this all, this, this plan that he devised here of how he would somehow or another get that which he truly wanted deep down inside. He wanted to be number one. He wanted to be the firstborn. That's why he came out grabbing that foot. His whole life, he was constantly wanting to be at the top and he would do anything to hurt other people to get to that position. Let me pause right here and say this, helping people in distress with no personal benefit in return is a moral obligation that we see all throughout scripture. That's a moral obligation that we see all throughout scripture. This is what Jacob really failed in. He was so focused on himself that he didn't even care about the need in his twin brother's life. Just a, a bowl of soup was all he had to give him. But he, he had this, this incredible plan that he would cheat his brother out of the birthright so that he would enjoy all the benefits, all the blessings, all the privileges of being the firstborn. Think about that moral obligation because that moral obligation that you and I have to, to help others in their time of distress, in their time of need, is not only an Old Testament concept, but it is also a New Testament concept. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 15, if you will. Uh, fifth book of the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 15. Look at verse 11. Deuteronomy 15, verse 11. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. There will always be poor people, right? There is even today in our 21st century culture. Therefore, I command thee, God says, saying, thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor, and to thy needy, in thy land. In other words, you come in contact with people who are needy, those who are in distress. You may not be able to solve all of their problems, and most of the time we can't, but there's a time to be able to reach out and to genuinely and sincerely help those individuals. In other words, the moral of the story is, here's a person in need. You have the ability to meet that need, but instead you say, no, I'm not going to help meet that need unless I get something in return for it. That's the mindset of Jacob. Listen to the New Testament. Let me give you a New Testament verse. Do you remember 1 John chapter 3 and verse 17? But whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Now think about the love of God for a moment. God loved us when we were yet sinners. That's what Romans 5 verse 8 says. God loved us. God met the greatest need that we had in our life, and that is the forgiveness of our sin, knowing that really there was nothing in it for him. <laughs> what do we really have to offer God? God. The one who created the universe, the one who I mentioned this morning has greater value and, and, and greater worth than anybody or anything else in all of the universe. What do we really have to offer him? What could he benefit from us? You see, he saw our condition, he loved us, and he provided a way of salvation for us. And the Bible says that whenever we as born-again believers see a need and we don't reach out and minister to that person in their adversity or in their distress, then how does the love of God dwell in us? 
Our self-consumed Adamic nature says, there's no law that says I have to help him. Besides, what's in it for me? The Apostle Paul says in Galatians 5 verse 16, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walking in the spirit. You see, the spirit within us whispers, help him or help her because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing. Jacob failed to do the right thing here in Genesis chapter 25. He failed miserably. Here was an opportunity for him to say, hey, I know you're tired. I know you've been out hunting all day. You probably started early this morning. You haven't had breakfast. You haven't had lunch. I've got a big pot of uh, 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 lentil soup right here, and uh, I'll be glad to pour you a bowl and give it to you. That would have been the right thing. That would have been his moral obligation, his moral duty. But instead, all he could do was think about himself. He thought, this is an opportunity to get what I've always wanted. What did he want? The birthright. He wanted all the privileges, all the blessings, and all the perks that came with being the firstborn. You see, you and I need to understand that it is the in dwelling Holy Spirit that helps us to quit thinking about ourselves all the time and to begin thinking about the needs of others around us. There's a battle that goes on in our lives every day. Within our hearts, we still have the old Adamic nature. We haven't lost that. But now that we are born again believers in Jesus Christ, we have also the indwelling Holy Spirit. The new divine nature is within us. And there's that battle that is going on, that passage that I just referred to, Galatians chapter 5, talks about how that if we walk in the flesh, there are severe consequences, fruit that we don't want that will be manifested in our lives. But if we walk in the Spirit, then we have wonderful fruit. The fruit of the Spirit abounds in our lives. But we face that dilemma every day. Which voice do we listen to? You see, Jacob listened to that old Adamic fleshly voice that said, go ahead, get your way. You want it. You know that you do. Esau doesn't deserve the birthright. You take it. It's rightfully yours. You see, where there is a need, we have the moral responsibility to not only be aware of that need, but if we have the capability to help that person, that means we ought to reach out and to meet that need.